guys, it's Jenna. I know, long time no see. I've been really infrequent about putting up videos. We went from daily vlogs to nearly weekly. Um, part of that's, again, I'm in a really hard downward swing. I lost a lot of mania. So a lot of my motivation has gone out the window with depression. Um, and, uh been really sick lately. Um, viral bacterial stuff related to my job that I've caught. But I'm also on metformin for my insulin resistance issue related to my fertility. And for those of you who don't know, metformin is more often than not prescribed to people who have type 2 diabetes. I am not diabetic, but because of my body's high running insulin, it's essentially doing the same thing for me, what it would for a diabetic person. It helps to balance out the sugars and the insulin in my body. A diabetic person has the opposite issue, essentially, of what I have. They don't have enough. I have way too much. So with that comes a whole host of problems. I have chronic there's no other really nice way to put this. Chronic diarrhea from it. Um, it's typical of this medication for that to happen. And it's exhausting. It puts me in danger of dehydration, even though I'm really good at making sure I get my water intake on a daily basis. I'm very, very focused on making sure I get enough water in my system, especially when I'm at work up moving around. But it becomes a problem sometimes at work. I just can't up and go to the bathroom whenever I need to. I'm responsible for the kids in my room. Legally, I have to be in there in case something happens. I am liable for them. And if I leave the room for any reason and something happens, that costs me not only my job, but my certification and therefore my career. So I really have to reestablish a pattern of when I can go to the bathroom and retrain my body to that. Um, it's not so bad when I have my collaborative special education partner teacher that I co-teach with during second and third period. He's great. He knows I'm on a medication that doesn't treat my digestive tract very well. And if I need to step out, he lets me. But two-thirds of the rest of my day, I'm on my own. And I teach five class periods back-to-back -back before I get a solid scheduled break, and that's my lunch for half an hour. Teach one more period, have planning, and then teach another period. So it can be really exhausting once I get past third period of, okay, pray to God I don't have an episode, pray to God I don't have an episode where I have to leave the room because I can't. And I don't trust my 11th grade classes as much as I trust my seniors. <laughs> Um, there's a big difference in maturity between juniors and seniors. You might not think that, but there's something magical that happens during the summer between a kid's junior and senior year of high school. They just become a lot more understanding about certain things. My seniors also understand that something else isn't quite right, whereas my juniors don't care. Um... I've never formally announced that I have bipolar, but anyone who knows what the signs really are can kind of pinpoint it. Bipolar is not something you can easily mistake. And it's been rough the last few weeks. I've had a lot of anxiety attacks because of things that have been going on at work. And administration's not liking it. But at the same time, bipolar is considered a disability, whether I like it or not. And federal law says you can't hold absent days due to a disability against me, which is basically saying, dude, it's not her fault. She got this luck of the draw. And it's really not. Um, 
I went for years with my bipolar under control self-management from the age of 18 probably until I was 26 so about eight nine years I was on my own self-management and then dad died and then two years later my brother was killed and that just kind of triggered me back into needing help and really addressing some things that happened in my childhood that desperately needed to be addressed. Some PTSD issues from things that I'm not comfortable about ever talking here about. Um, but coupling the PTSD from that with the grief for my dad and my brother and also just bipolar in general, it's not pretty in my brain. It's pretty dark and morbid sometimes. And some people think I'm just being overly dramatic, and it's like, uh-uh, no, literally. It is difficult for me to simply pull myself out of bed some days, and I've had more days like that than not recently. If it wasn't for my husband, I don't know what I would do most days. I literally don't physically have the wherewithal to do what I need to do. And people don't realize how huge of an effect mental illness has on the body. It plays a huge role. The stress of it just ages the body much faster. And it causes a lot of toxicity physically in the body because of certain chemicals being out of balance and so on and so forth in the brain. Plus, you add on top of the fact that... The psych meds I'm on aren't all that great on my body anyway. I mean, I, I would hate to take a look at my liver right now. I definitely don't have the liver of a 29-year-old, and that's probably because of my psych meds. Um, I mean, I've never researched into what psych meds do to the liver long-term, but any medica medication on the liver long-term, as a general rule, is not good. So... And the liver controls where the toxins in your body in your body goes and things of that nature, and the gallbladder helps with some of that. But I don't have one of those anymore. Um, part of the stress that I've been under physically from my mental illness actually killed my gallbladder. I think I was very, very ill the beginning of my second year teaching with my gallbladder. And I thought my problems now with having to worry about running to the bathroom were bad. Then they were worse. I mean, then I was literally every class period, at the end of every class period, for two and a half months before a doctor would do anything. Um, running to the bathroom at the end of every class period, whether I felt like I had to or not, just because I was so afraid of my gallbladder failing, you know, and I knew it was my gallbladder. I recognized the symptoms right away because I've seen the symptoms of my mom before. When my mom's gallbladder went when I was in eighth grade, hers, it was like overnight. It was like appendicitis kind of caliber bad. Her, she was puking up bile. It was so bad. I mean, she became systemically infected and I was slowly headed that way and I knew it and finally I convinced my PCP to do what I needed to do to get it checked and she said oh my god yeah you're right it is your gallbladder and it, I can't believe it is you're only 20 at the time 27 I think I was yeah I just turned 27 and she set me up with a surgeon who didn't think it was a problem enough um, that's Cody. He'll be on his way home from work here soon. He actually has a decent shift, and I'll get to that here in a minute. Um, but the surgeon I had was a nightmare. He would not 
do the surgery right away. He wanted me to go see a gastroenterologist to make sure it was my gallbladder and check and make sure it wasn't a whole list of other things. Even though my PCP did all the tests saying, hey, look, it is her gallbladder. And the um, there's, I believe it's called a Kinovac, where they check the flow of bodily fluid through the gallbladder and the ducts that attach to it. They checked that and it was slow, but it was moving, which basically said to the surgeon, it's not needed yet. And I was so sick. I remember calling this guy back. I had an appointment on a Friday morning with him. And this was the day after they had done the Kinovac. I had to stay away from school for 24 hours because I was radioactive. Literally, I couldn't be around my students because it was dangerous. I was a hazard to be around them. I was that radioactive from this test that they had done. And I went in the next morning for a follow-up, intending just to do a half day. I ended up having to take a whole day because I called the surgeon in tears and got another appointment that afternoon right quick. And my husband and I basically said, look, we've called every other surgeon in the area you're the only one who's taking her case. Do something about it. And we kind of badgered him into agreeing to do it, which was really good because when he got in there, I had gallstones so bad that my gallbladder was full to bursting, which was why I was so sick. So I, I can only imagine it had to be stress from my bipolar that caused this physical ailment and the body starts getting when it's stressed it's going to start hacking off stuff it doesn't need to get by and one of the things that's not essential is the gallbladder so I guess that leaves my appendix and my tonsils next <laughs> um joking aside anyway I was uh what I was saying earlier about Cody, his work schedule has changed, so hopefully you'll see him doing some more videos here soon. They have him on a lot more 7 to 3 morning shifts. Today he did an oddball 1 to 9. Usually their uh, shifts are 7 to 3, 3 to 11, and 11 to 7. So you get one of those three shifts usually, and today they had him on a 1 to 9. I'm not quite sure why. Um, oh, that's right. Yes, he has a morning shift tomorrow, and they needed somebody in the evenings with a new person this evening, but didn't want him to do a 3 to 11 and turn around to do a 7 to 3. I think he's had to do that once before. I'm not sure. Don't quote me on that. But he's pretty exhausted <laughs> because he's not used to doing the morning shifts. He got used to doing the evening shifts, so at least he's not doing any overnights. Thank God. I want to say it's been a month since he's done an overnight shift so one thing that really has ha helped to circle this back into the conversation um, that this video is really focusing on it really helps me to have him here in the mornings because he's he's awesome he's my cheerleader uh, he gives me the get up and go and tries to encourage me, come on, honey, you have to do this. I know you can do this. I know you're strong enough to, to, to go through another day. And usually, most of the times, I do manage to get out of bed. It's because of him. He's able to easily, most mornings, convince me, you can do this, or strong arm me <laughs> into doing it when I really don't want to. And I, I know that has to be hard on him. But I just want to say I'm very thankful, Cody, for all you do for me, honey. I very much love you. Thank you for standing by me. That's all for me for today, guys. A bunch of rambling as usual, but some rambling's better than nothing. Alright guys, if you want to see more videos from the two of us, especially as we start into our fertility journey here within the next month or so, please like, comment, and subscribe. We will be more addicted to doing vlogs the more you guys let us know what you like. <laughs> Alright guys, have a good night. Much love.
Bye-bye.